Today's video is going to cover the subject of storage spaces. And I want to quickly go into this for a couple of reasons. One of which is that it's something you should be aware of as a Windows 10 feature. It's also a server feature. And you can use disks, multiple disks, as basically RAID sets. Now, different types of RAID, whether they be mirrored, parodied, or just simply striped. We're not going to cover the details around those different options at this point. But simply to be aware that there is such a thing as software RAID, and in some ways software RAID is better than hardware RAID, and I'm going to cover a couple of reasons why. One of the reasons that hardware RAID fails over software RAID is that you need dedicated hardware. And in the event that something goes wrong with that hardware, let's say you're using a motherboard that has an inbuilt RAID driver, the problem comes that if you ever need to replace that motherboard, you either need an exactly identical model or one that has the same chipset in order to recover the data. This is where software RAID has the advantage as it doesn't need that. It simply needs the disks to be plugged in in the correct order. That's why things like FreeNAS just works straight out of the box. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter or hit that like and subscribe button. Now one of the things about storage spaces is that you can create them either through the GUI or you can create them through command line. Now we're going to skip over the GUI one simply because yes it can be done that way but there's plenty of tutorials and easy read throughs and to be honest the GUI makes it so simple it's not even worth it. So we're going to do the command line just to show you what it would look like from a command line perspective. So we have first of all get physical disks that can pull. Simple enough. Um, we can also use it without the parameters and we can see that we have another disk in there that is not part of the pool and that's the one that our OS is sitting on. And that's kind of one of the things I want to touch on briefly is to make sure that you think about how you set up storage pools. Ideally it should be separate from the OS disk. So anyway, uh, we have a storage subsystem and we also have our physical disks. So basically the combination of these two things are required in order to create a storage pool. So they're your, your basic information. So in our case, I'm going to take all the disks and the storage subsystem as parameters so that when we create our storage pool, we simply use those two parameters. Well, technically three, because we also need to give the storage pool a name. So first one, we're going to say S equals get uh, storage subsystem and that will basically return the name of our storage subsystem and then we can parameterize it into our next command. After that we're going to do the same with the get physical disk and then we're going to pass that straight through to the underlying uh, storage pool creation process so that we can go ahead and effectively create the pool. So now we've collected those parameters we're going to go ahead and go new storage pool friendly name in this case I'm just going to call it my pool um, then we're going to set another parameter which is the storage subsystem you buy unique ID and we're just going to take our parameter dot unique ID and then we're going to get the disks in this case we only want the ones that we collected earlier so we're just going to get disk and this is the bit where I'm going to say it really does help if you remember to open command prompt with admin privileges so let's <laughs> open that up again and you know what rather than type this out let's just go ahead and paste this in quickly same basic principle but it'll save us a bit of time later on so we now have a my storage pool created now this is one option this would just give us a, a straight storage pool but this would be a stripe set and one of the things that I don't want to do is risk my data. So I'm going to go ahead and actually remove this storage pool and start again because I want to show you one additional command which is kind of an important one if you want to make use of this and not lose data as per our previous discussion about whether hardware RAID is worth it or not. So I'm just going to remove the storage pool. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to create this one again but with one subtle difference. We're going to put the resilience setting factor and default and this point I'm going to use 
uh, parody. So this is going to create a RAID 5 set. Depending on what options you want, you might create mirrors, raids. It, it's a lot more complicated than I want to get into in this video. But long story short, for the moment, I just want if a single disk fails, that I can recover my data. So I'm going to go for the RAID 5 option. And if we go have a look at the storage pool at this point, we should be able to see that we have our physical disks assigned. So we have all three, and they're part of this pool. But one of the things I wanted to point out is we can see the pool, but we can't at this point use it. So as an example, if I go around and say, OK, I've got these three disks. What can I see in my computer as an example? Well, just the regular OS disk and not a lot else. So what happens if I open Disk Manager? Can I see them in Disk Manager? No, actually, I can't because as far as Disk Manager is concerned, they're also not there. So in order to now take this pool and turn it into something useful, we need to do a couple more steps. So to make the storage pool available so that we can see it and use it, uh, we need to first create a virtual disk that we will assign the storage pool to. So we're going to go ahead and give it a friendly name. In this case, I'm going to call it data. Uh, we then need to tell it which storage pool we're going to use for this. So we'll just quickly point it to our pre-existing storage pool. Um, enter the name, my storage pool. And then last but not least, we're going to do the usage. Now, I could give it a size and say, OK, it's going to be 10 gig or 100 gig or a terabyte. But in this case, I'm just going to say use max. I'm going to use all of my storage pool. So as you can see, we have our total size and then our actual size. Now, remember, we're using uh, RAID 5 here, so we've lost one of the disks. So we're effectively down to 34 out of the 62, that, sorry, uh, 54 that we started with. I then need to initialize my disk because believe it or not, it will effectively be an offline disk up until this point. Um, now I need to quickly get the disk number for the next command. So in this case, our data disk is now disk four and I need to create a new partition on it because without a partition, it's just a unformatted disk with no partitions, no drive letters, no nothing. So here we need the disk number and I'm going to say use max size and I'm going to assign a drive letter. We now have an e disk. And I'm like, cool, as, as you might see in the background, I'm being prompted to format it. So I'm actually going to format it. But in this case, I'm going to do it from command line as well. So I'm just going to do format volume and then say E. And then what we should have at the end of this is a fully formatted disk volume that we can go ahead and start using. And remember, this is now a RAID set. So this is not something like uh, just a simple disk. You actually have parity here. So if one of those disks fails, I can simply replace it and I can continue on without losing my data, which is something that you don't normally get from regular disk manager and it's only really available through the storage spaces. The fact that you can manage this from command line makes it particularly useful, um, not just from the rebuild point of view, but from the setup point of view, because you can create a script and then just simply run it. Now, as always, I promised there was no smoke and mirrors here, and I can go ahead and create a folder just to prove that the disk is writable and that all is running. Now, I would love to show you the recovery part, but frankly, this is already an eight-minute video, and I want to cut it here. If you like this video, you know what to do, and as always, subscribe for more content.